Today, Adobe announced a new version of Lightroom, Lightroom Classic. In this video, I want to take a look at it and see what's changed and what's been updated since the previous version. So you can really break the changes up into two main categories. The first is they made overall speed improvements throughout the program. So opening the program is faster, switching between the library and the develop module is faster, importing images is faster, preview rendering is faster, a lot of general speed increases, which I think to me is huge because Lightroom has felt a little sluggish for the last six months or year or so, and I was hoping Adobe would address that. So that's awesome. There's no real way I can address those specific things. You're kind of just going to have to use it and play with it to really feel that speed increase. But after using it for about an hour since it's come out, I can definitely say it's noticeable. The second thing is Adobe has added a couple new features to the local adjustment tools in Lightroom. And I think there's something that are very useful there. They're essentially giving us the ability to mask out certain areas of our photograph after we've already used the local adjustment tool. So I've got a couple images here and I want to give an example. This first shot here I have of the Capitol building in Montana. So this is in Helena, Montana. And what I want to do is I want to change around the sky of the photograph. I want to change the sky or maybe I want to change the building, whatever it happens to be. Now here's the thing. If we look at the tonalities and the colors of these different areas of the photograph, we can see that tonality-wise, meaning brightness, darkness-wise, they're very similar tones, the building and the sky. The sky is maybe a little darker than middle gray. The building definitely has some areas that are the same. But if we look at this in colors, as far as colors are concerned, the sky is very blue and the building is very yellow. So if we were able to tell Lightroom to make a selection based on which different color it would be, this would be a good time to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my develop module here and I'm going to go into the local adjustment brush and I'm just going to paint out, I'm going to turn on my overlay with the letter O so that we can see where we've painted. I'm going to try to make a change to the building itself. So I'm going to paint here and you'll notice that my painting is going to be really rough. I'm just going to real roughly go over this building and paint it all in. So previously to now, this is as good as we could have gotten. Now, honestly, we could have turned on auto masking. We could have got done another, a few other things. But for example, this is about as good as a soft, fuzzy paintbrush in Lightroom is going to get us, right? Our feathering's at 100. If we want to do something quick and easy, this is about as good as it's going to get. But since the change with Lightroom Classic, once you've painted your area, there's a little thing down here at the bottom of the local adjustment brush called Range Mask. And because these areas of the photograph differ in color, I'm going to go to Range Mask and I'm going to turn on the color Range Mask. Now, what this asks us to do is sample which color in the photograph we want the selection to select. So in this case, it would be some of the orange of the building. So I'm going to grab this little eyedropper tool right here and I'm going to click and drag and select a little box area of the part of the building that I want to keep. So there we go. Now, things get a little strange, but don't sweat it. We can drag this little slider around. And you can see what it has done. This little slider basically determines how many colors you want to select on either side of it. But we can see what it's done. You remember how soft edged and how fuzzy and how poor that selection was to start with. Now if we look at, and I turn on and off the little selected mask overlay, that green area is perfectly over the building and it's not affecting anything else. And that's super cool. So let me show you that again. I'm going to go ahead and reset this. I'm just going to grab my paintbrush and I'm going to really roughly paint over top of the building, something like this. And then I'm going to grab my range mask and I'm going to turn on a color range mask because again, the one area differs from the other area in color. So that makes more sense. And once I grab my range mask color, I'm going to get the little eyedropper tool and I'm going to select a, cer <coughs> a certain area of the photograph like that. And then I can play with this amount slider until I'm happy with the results. And I think right about 80 on this photo, the building all looks green, all looks like it's being selected. Also, I should say you can change the color of your, uh, of your overlay, this little guy down here at the bottom, by going up to your tools menu and adjustment mask overlay. You can pick between red, green, white, or black. So most of you are probably on red. You see something like this. Green I found was a little easier to see in this instance, so I had switched it to green. But the cool thing is, once you get that set, now I can go back to my sliders. Let me turn off my overlay with the letter O, 
and I can fine tune this, now it's a little too far obviously, but I might want to darken the building or maybe brighten the building, maybe give it a little bit more saturation, maybe take the temperature up a little bit, make it look a little warmer, and you'll notice everything I'm doing is only affecting that building area. And if we zoom in, that's a very, very precise selection. The sky's not changing at all, only the building. I think this is a really good improvement to Lightroom's adjustment panel, to Lightroom's local adjustments. Some things that we would previously have had to go to Photoshop for can now be done right in Lightroom. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is the luminance mask. So there's also the luminance, which is when what you want is a different brightness value than what you don't want. So for that, fo for that example, I'm going to grab this image where I've got a lot of light and dark. Take this into the develop module. And here, I'm just going to use this for example. I'm, I'm not necessarily going to say that this change is going to improve the photo. But as an example, I'm going to grab my paintbrush and I'm going to turn on my overlay again. And let's just say that I want to darken this kind of frame area around the, uh, the structure of the parking garage that this was taken in. So I'm going to paint over it, and you'll see with painting, it's not going to be very precise, right? I'm going to paint over these little edges here, paint over those, and it's not a very precise way to do it. But if I go to Range Mask, and I turn on the Luminance Range Mask, we get a couple sliders. So the first is this Range Slider. So what the Range Slider is, and there's actually two of them, it's saying in what range of brightness, darkness values do you want to actually select or affect? And I know that this, these are some darker values that I'm looking to select, and I don't want the lighter values. So I'm going to take one of these guys, the lighter one, and I'm going to drag it in. And look at that effect. So there's before, and there is, that's a little too far, before and after. And you can see if I turn on and off that overlay right now, it's just affecting that frame around the outside. Whereas before, I would have to paint that very precisely. So the way to think about it is this. If you're looking to do a local adjustment on a photo in Lightroom now, you will start by using the existing tools that we've had in here for years. But if you find that those do not provide enough precision, and you also can say that the area that you want to select is a different color or a different tone than the area you don't want to select. You can turn on either the color or the luminance range mask, and that will help you get additional precision in making your selection. So in this case, now that I'm done, I'm going to actually go back and turn off my overlay and now use my exposure slider and look at that control that I have, only affecting that frame around the outside of the structure and not affecting the background at all. So this is super, super powerful. I'm really glad they made these changes. And beyond that, they also made everything faster, which I think is a super welcome addition to Lightroom as it's been super sluggish. If you have any questions about this, I'll be making a more in-depth tutorial on these sliders in the future. But if you have any questions right now, go ahead and uh, put them down in the comments section down below. If you liked this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. And lastly, if you want to get weekly videos from Rocky Mountain School of Photography, hit that subscribe button right down there in the corner. And if you want to stay up to date with our videos and get notified whenever we post one, right next to the subscribe button, there's a little picture of a bell. If you click on that, you can say to get notifications and you will be notified whenever we post a new video.